Hi, this is Sarah McLeod, your host for Proven Cures, and thank you for tuning in to part three of Cancer Cell Death by Soursop. Um, in this uh, version, I am going to speak with you about a human subject's uh, research study. Actually, it's a case study in a woman who had what I like to consider a hopeless case of breast cancer. When I say hopeless, I mean it seemed to have gone away after traditional therapy, after having chemotherapy and radiation, and it came back worse um, in a form of metastasis, metastasis that actually spread to her lungs. And um, it seemed like there was no hope for her that she was going to die from cancer until she incorporated the use of soursop into her regimen. Um, the title of the study is Patient with Metastatic Breast Cancer. Metastatic referring to spreading, that's what metastasis means, achieves stable disease for five years on graviola, which is the other name for soursop, and Zalota, which is a form of chemotherapy unknown also as Cape Cytobin, after progressing on multiple lines of therapy. So once again, the title is, Patient with Metastatic Breast Cancer Achieves Stable Disease, so it's no longer spreading all over the place, for five years on Graviola and Zalota, after progressing on multiple lines of therapy. It was published in 2014 in volume three, number three of Advances in Breast Cancer Research. That is the title of the journal itself, Advances in Breast Cancer Research. The uh, research was conducted at the Department of Hematology and Oncology at the Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center at the University of Miami. And the publishers are Damien Mikhail Hansra, Orlando Silva, Ashwin Meta and Eugene on AHN. So um, for this study, um, I'm not going to do a lot of paraphrasing. I'm going to try and explain as much as I can that I don't think the lay public would, would understand without explanation or if you haven't already gone through the process of trying to heal from breast cancer. Um, I do have an extensive history myself in conducting data management for breast cancer studies. So I do understand what I'm reading and I'm able to explain it to you, hopefully in a way for you to understand it as well. So the patient um, was a 66-year-old 66 woman diagnosed with estrogen and progesterone receptor positive, uh, human epidermal growth factor receptor negative, um, left breast cancer. She was stage 2B left breast cancer with the involvement of one lymph node at the time and no metastasis diagnosed in 1998. Uh, they opted, doctors opted for conservative therapy. She only had a, a lumpectomy. She did not have neoadjuvant therapy, um, meaning she did not have chemotherapy before surgery. Um, after the lumpectomy, she did have chemotherapy. Uh, on, she was put on an anthracycline and taxane base uh, course and after that, she had radiation, um, and everything was completed the following year in 1999, and that is a normal course of therapy. Um, and by 2002, she presented with lung metastasis, which was proven by biopsy. Um, after the, the disease spread to her lungs, she was started on hormonal therapy and progressed, progressed, meaning it got worse, um, while being given Femara, Tamoxifen, and Vaslodex. Um, those are all hormonal therapies, by the way. Uh, after that, because of the progression, she was started on chemotherapy using a chemo agent called Navel Bean, or Navel Bine, um, which was initiated in March of 2005, and she was on it all the way up until February of 2006. And to... February of 2006, she was started on a different regimen of Abraxane, Avastin, and Gemcitabine. And she was on that course from February of 06 to May of 07. In May of 07, she was started on Doxol, and she took that up until September of 07. The patient um, in September of 07 was then found to have new metastasis to her liver. And at that point, she was started on Zolota, which is also known as Cape Cytobin. And she was given that, uh, 2,500 milligrams of that by mouth per day, two weeks on, one week off at a time. Um, and at that time, she elected to start a, to incorporate soursop into her diet. 
And she did that by boiling 10 to 12 dry leaves of soursop for 5 to 7 minutes. And she drank 8 ounces of that tea every day, once per day. Two more markers at the time of starting the soursop and the zolota were CEA, um, which is an antigen for testing cancer in the blood. CEA 12.5, CA, which is another cancer antigen uh, used for testing cancer in the blood. Uh, was it 15 to 3, CA 27 to 29. Her tumor markers in April of 08 decreased significantly. So the CEA dropped from 12.5 went from 12.5 down to 5.9 her CA15 her CA15 to 3 stayed the same okay so both of her CA variables let me see 12 okay her first CA variable was 12 1249 units per milliliter um at the time when she started the sour sob and the second one was 1295 units by April let me see when did she when did she start the sour sob? I'm reading and keeping up with it at the same time. So that was September of '07. So by April of 2008, like I said, her CEA dropped to 5.9. Her first CA um, testing dropped down from 1249 to 68.6, and her second one dropped from 1295 to 113 units per milliliter. So her cancer the cancer was decreasing in her bloodstream. Um. The patient then moved away and continued her regimen and then came back to the office December of 2011 and decided to discontinue the uh, sour stop on her own. Her labs in March of 2012, let's see, her CEA, the CEA antigen reduced down to 4.3, the CA 25.7 and 35 units per milliliter respectively. Um, on PET's CT scan, however, her upper, her left upper lung disease did worsen. When it worsened, she went back on the soursop and had labs done again in November of 2012. At that time now, the CEA dropped again drastically to 2.9 and her, her cancer antigens dropped as well to 32 and 20.7 units per milliliter respectively re-imaging with PET CT scan in November of 2012 showed stable disease and um, this study was published in 2014 um, I believe patient says so far patient has had stable disease and experienced no side effects from therapy for over five years okay so if you tune into part four Four, I believe of this series I'm going to discuss and I'm going to share two human subjects studies on colon cancer um, I may not even be able to I'm not sure I'll be able to complete them in one video because I have a lot of information on on one of them that will be really really helpful really interesting to anyone who may have been diagnosed with colon cancer okay stay tuned thanks for watching and subscribe to subscribe to Proving Cures. I always forget to say that. Subscribe, please.